Hello, I'm Adam Stewart. I'm a network specialist at Microsoft. Over the past three or four years, I've had thousands of remote design sessions with customers, helping them design their cloud networking topologies. Uh, during that time, I've picked up some tips and tricks that work for me. So I thought I'd create this short video to share that knowledge. These days, I primarily use Microsoft Whiteboard when running remote architecture sessions. I find it works really well. And I've had some really good feedback from my colleagues. So I'd like to share what's worked for me and hopefully other people can, can learn from that. As I say, it this is just what's worked for me. Other tools work for other people. But I find that particularly when you're working in cloud networking, you tend to get uh, fairly technical fairly quickly. You move from the, the business value side into, well, okay, how is this actually going to meet our requirements? What does a design look like? Therefore, being comfortable with tools like a, a whiteboard solution for remote conference calls is really important. Uh, and this really fits into the mantra of designing with a customer uh, in terms of let's find the solution that works for you. Let's uh, iron out the decreases in what we need to look at here, as opposed to here's a PowerPoint deck and these are all the reasons I'm going to talk for half an hour. It's much more collaborative to use a whiteboard in my experience. First things first, we need to actually work out how we're going to draw and type on the whiteboard. Now, me personally, I've tried everything going. Working in networking, you find you, you need to use a whiteboard a lot. So I've tried everything from styluses to actually drawing on my Microsoft Surface laptop. I don't really like the stylus approach uh, because I find that looking down at a stylus and not seeing my writing on the screen, I can't quite reconcile those two things. The same with a Surface laptop. Um, when I work from home, I use various monitors and I find if I'm staring down at the Surface, I lose some of that interaction uh, with my customer. So what I've ended up on is assist in using a mouse in combination with some of the, the Microsoft Whiteboard tools. So I use a high quality wired mouse, never have to worry about charging it. And if you persist with it long enough, you generally get pretty good at you know drawing the shapes and learning that things snap to when you need to. The next area is to choose the arena within which you're going to use the whiteboard. Now, this is focused primarily on, on Microsoft Teams, which is where I spend most of my life, as you can imagine, working for Microsoft. And you can run the, the Microsoft whiteboard application locally on your computer. But what I find works really well is running it inside of your web browser. And this will let you then run multiple tabs. And that means you can switch back and forth between the whiteboard and other content as you go in a really seamless way. So for example, if I'm running a, a networking workshop and we go, oh, okay, so where, where are those express locations? I can maybe flip to another tab and we can scroll through and have a look and we can flip back. If you're get, just getting into whiteboarding a lot and you still feel like you need some slides to back up and refer back to, you can obviously open uh, anything you've got in OneDrive, you can open it online. So here's an example where I've got a, a slide open, a slide deck open in a different tab. So I can flick through here and refer to this if I need to and quickly flip back. And I'm doing all of this without resharing in Teams, which can really sort of kill the flow of your meeting. Next area is, do you want to prep the whiteboard or not? Now, for something like this, which is more of a training webinar, definitely doing some prep is going to help. But don't feel like you have to prep everything, right? We don't want to uh, boil the ocean. If you're just going into a, a new meeting with a customer and you know it's going to be more exploratory, then feel free to go in with a blank whiteboard, just as you would do in person, because you will find that the process of creating the whiteboard between yourself and the customer 
is part of what's going to help and bring everyone along in the journey so i can say okay well you know here i've got a a gateway and then over here i might have a virtual machine and then we're going to join them together and sort of everyone's nodding along and everyone understands the flow so uh, choose whether or not to prep your whiteboard based on the the type of session i find that when i'm walking through diagrams i will quite often want to use my hands and obviously in a remote uh, situation turning your camera on being able to articulate what you're drawing with your hands as well is is really going to help in my experience okay this is a, a a very small point but one that i've i've picked up on quite a lot and that is you really want to instill in your customer but also yourself that you're very confident with this approach to to whiteboarding and sharing content so when you you've got through the introductions and everyone understands the context and why we're here and what we want to get out of the meeting when you start using the whiteboard and you click the the share icon inside of microsoft teams so let's say you come inside of here and you click share and then you choose the appropriate application uh, web browser that's got your whiteboard inside click share start sharing and then just start using the whiteboard what, what i see all the time is people say oh can you see this is that coming through okay no, 99 times out of 100 the technology is going to work perfectly fine and that one time that it doesn't people will tell you and it really makes a difference if you just proceed with confidence don't ask for uh, confirmation at every step okay let's get into the the meat of this presentation in terms of the actual tips for whiteboarding one thing i'll say is i'm just scraping the surface here if you're a whiteboard expert uh, a whiteboard expert at microsoft there's probably many many things here which i'm not going to cover these are just the things that have worked for me in a, a technical architect role one of the things that i do is not only use the whiteboard for, for drawing but as I'm going through a meeting with a customer, if we kind of lay out the high points of what we want to cover, I will I will note on my screen, okay, one, we want to talk about, let's say the, the, the regional design, and then two, we want to talk about maybe the backup, uh, three, we want to talk about uh, how this plays into our hybrid strategy, and I'll, I'll make a note of these so everyone understands, okay, we, we, this is what we're talking about, and you can even tick them off as you go. You can you can you can tick them off or cross them out as you go and this will help as well um with, with your remembering of the meeting you, you can say okay well that's what we covered uh, it'll help when you take your notes the next one is and i see this a lot is don't rush don't rush the whiteboard everyone's got plenty of time um to, to make a good job of this so i'll give you an example of the default way in which people use microsoft whiteboard and that will be to take the pen uh, and just start drawing so you will you'll probably not have the enhanced ink shapes turned on which will mean that your scribbles look like scribbles so people will just start drawing like this go okay we're going to do this we're going to connect it over here and then people will even you know try and draw with draw text with their uh with their mouse and in the end you, you end up with this kind of horrible chicken scratch which frankly doesn't look very professional um and then there's some there's some ways in which we can do a much better job without doing that much more in terms of uh changing our use of the tools so as i say biggest tip is make sure this is turned on enhance ink shapes automatically that means that when you draw something that looks roughly like a square the power of technology is going to make it actually look like a square same with circles triangles etc etc you can even click these and you can make them bigger you can make them smaller rotate them around copy and paste there's so much here that you can do to make the whiteboard look professional whilst using a mouse So not only do I use Microsoft Whiteboard for my, my in-meeting 
progressing the design session with a customer, but I also use it for my own note taking. And if I was to go back now to my main collection of whiteboards, I've got hundreds, if not thousands of whiteboards and they, they all follow a certain naming convention. So I have kind of date, customer name, and then you can search these just like any uh, document in OneDrive. And that's a really good way, especially if you work across lots of different customers. Uh, maybe a couple of weeks have passed since your last call. Just search for the customer name and find the whiteboard and you can refer to that. Next one is around how you do text on the whiteboard. So as I said, we, we, we really don't want to be trying to do text with our mouse. And you can see it tidies it up a little bit, so it's better than it used to be, but it still doesn't look that professional. Even if you use a uh, an actual stylus or you're drawing onto a, a surface. So I tend to just click on the text tool over here and then type. And this really doesn't take very long. Another tip is if you're doing a network diagram and you know there'll be kind of lots of text and multiple components to this, you can just kind of do uh, shift and enter and then do the next line, do the next line, and then you can come, still come back and draw boxes around these and they can be different component parts and you can attach them together like that. But it just made the typing process a bit quicker for you. This one, really, really easy, but everyone forgets it. Yes, you might be able to draw a pretty, a pretty straight line with your mouse, but if you hold down shift, you can draw an exactly straight line. The 80-20 rule is just more about uh, how I approach the use of these tools. And this is um, probably what I'm talking about here is 20% of what you can do. But getting the 20% knowledge sort of cemented in your brain in terms of these tips that I'm giving you will have 80% of the impact when you when you work with customers. Copy and paste, you can use this in a couple of ways. You can use it to actually copy and paste the shapes that you draw. So maybe you have three components to this particular architecture. And then also what you can do is if you are copying and pasting in uh, other content from elsewhere, you can paste in images directly to the whiteboard. So here's an example, I've just pasted in a screen grab directly into the whiteboard without leaving my, leaving my current share. Maybe you're working with multiple people inside of your company on the whiteboard. Of course, we can, we can share this, share the link, and then multiple, multiple people can draw on the whiteboard at the same time. One of the things that I sometimes do at the end of the meeting if it's good to share the whiteboard outside of your organization, then we've got an export image function here to attach that to an email. So if you've got a really big whiteboard, that's very high resolution, that export image is going to work really well. Make good use of the, the arrows function as well as the line function. I find that being able to switch between them when appropriate really adds to the the texture of the of the diagram the highlight tool is, is really great for zooming in on particular areas so re really just use the tools that are available to you and then make use of colors this is really really important uh, and really quick just to flip back you know i don't use any hotkeys i just use my mouse to click back and forth and it works really well so let's do a quick example of how this, how this would look in a typical networking design you might start the session, might be exploring the, the, the idea uh, of a hybrid network with a customer. And you might start by saying, okay, well, you know, at the top here, we've got Azure, maybe you've got a, uh, your, your, your VNet, your, your hub virtual network. And then inside of there, you might have an express route gateway. You might have a, a Azure firewall. And then you, maybe you've got a spoke VNet. Inside of there, you've got some VMs. And then down here, you've got your on-premises location and you've got some routers down there. 
and then I will I will sort of come in and and this is this is not all happening in silence right you're you're articulating it the customer's talking back and forth this will feel quite natural to you then you start adding in a bit of a bit of color to this and add the shapes in I generally do uh, Azure in blue that just feels kind of natural to me It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Everyone understands that this is a, a sketch, it's a whiteboard, but this will look much better than just scribbling uh, without the, the snap to function turned on. Maybe use uh, light gray to sort of outline the, the bigger components without overtaking your entire diagram. So that represents all of Azure. And then you switch to the, the arrow tool, maybe start adding the lines in. So you might say, okay, my on-premise routers connecting to my express route circuit. And then I take that and it connects into my express route gateway, which goes to my Azure firewall, which goes across VNet peer into my VM. So as you can see, you very quickly build up a, uh, not super accurate, but it's a, a great platform for a discussion. Uh, and in my experience, the difference between having this whiteboard versus just having audio and video is like night and day. Just to come back to this idea of supporting material, one of the reasons which I use the web browser is to flip between, for example, the Azure portal. Now maybe you're, there's nothing more powerful than saying, here's how it looks on a diagram, but by the way, Here's how it looks in the portal. You, know, you could say, this is this was my diagram with a virtual WAN hub. Oh, by the way, this is what a virtual WAN hub looks like in the portal. And you can click through here, or here's your express route gateway. This really brings it to light for a customer. It doesn't take a whole lot of preparation to do. You can even do this on the fly. One thing to mention, you've got to be careful of, especially in the, the digital age where a lot of meetings are recorded. You don't want to be spending too much time on your generic uh, holding areas. And by that, I mean, don't go to your OneDrive location, which has got all your customer names on it. Watch out for things like toolbars with personal information. Um, if you've got an Azure subscription, make sure that the, the naming conventions are fairly generic and, and safe to share with, with all customers. And then to wrap up this, session and the session with your customer what i like to do is share the whiteboard if i can i will come back to the whiteboard and refer to it when i follow up the meeting with a an email i generally will share share an email saying here are my notes from the meeting here's what we discussed here are the screenshots um i have a, a key sort of bound on my keyboard to do screen grabs very quickly Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful and I hope you have some great success in your design workshops using Microsoft Whiteboard.